Well, happy Friday, everyone. So the first thing I want to do today is go over last night's homework. As I said yesterday, uh, I gave you the answers, but you have to know how to do the work and show the work. So this goes back to what we did a couple of chapters ago. So let me just go through each of these with you in case you struggled. So the first thing I have to do is pick out two points. So these points have to be on the line. I can't use dots. Like if I use this particular point right here, so if I use like this dot here, why is my pen not working? Here we go. Sorry about that. So if I use this dot here, that's not going to work. So I could use this dot right here because that's on my line. So that's the point six, six. I can use this dot right here. That's 10, eight. It doesn't matter which points you pick as long as they're on the line. You could have picked this point right here, two, four. You could have picked this point here. So now I have to find the slope. So my slope would be eight minus six over 10 minus six gives me two over four, which I'm gonna to reduce to a half. If it's a nice fraction, we're going to leave it as a fraction. My B here is three. I can just look at the picture and I can see clearly like this is two and this is four. If it's something that's more complicated, we can figure out what B is, but we can just look at the picture and say, okay, that's three. So my equation is Y equals one half X plus three. Again, we're just using Y equals MX plus B. So then I plug in, it says on the 18th day, day is my X. So I want to plug in X equals 18. I won't show every step for that, but that's where I got the 12 parakeets. For number two, I would do the same thing. I first start by finding two points on the line. So I'm going to use this point right here. So that's the point 180. And again, you may have picked other points. I can use this point right here. That point is 3. 60. Now be careful with your negatives here. My slope would be 60 minus 80 over 3 minus 1, which gives me negative 20 over uh, 2, which gives me negative 10. My B here is very easy because it's hitting at exactly 90. So that's where this equation comes from. So you do have to show this work uh, how many comic books will we have at the end of the seventh day? Again, days is my X. So I would just plug in X equals seven into my equation. Again, you would show that work. I'm not showing everything here, but you would do Y equals negative 10 times seven plus 90 and show that work. And that would give you the 20 comic books. And the last one from the homework, again, I would find two points. It's easy to see here that my B is 35. I can use, okay, here's a point right here. That point would be 20. It's between 15 and 25. So 20, 20, that's a nice, easy one to use. I can use uh, 0, 35. I want to try to pick points that are on. If not, then I have to estimate. That's fine. Like, let's say the points, none of the points were exactly at uh, an integer at, at the corner of a square. Then I would just estimate as we did uh, yesterday. So like, let's say I had to use this point, I would say that's 25, maybe like 16. But I'll use 0, 35. My slope would be 35 minus 20. Over again, be careful with your negatives. Make sure your order is the same for both points. Gives me 15 over negative 20. Gives me negative 3 fourths. And my B is 35. So that gives me this equation here. It says use the equation. So even though we could look at the point here, we do want to use the equation. So uh, 40 minutes would be X equals 40. So I would say uh, Y equals negative three fourths times 40 plus 35. The reason we want you to learn how to use the equation is what if it's off the chart? What if it's like way down here and we can't see uh, if it's not part of that? So uh, solve this, my four cancels into 40. So I get negative 30 plus 35 and that would give me the five. Make sure you do put the label on. All right. Uh, if you don't have the um, worksheet, just ask Mrs. Asciola to pass, uh, pass it out for you if you're at home. Uh, make sure you open that. So today's lesson, I think you'll like, um, it's a little different than what we've been doing. It's about using uh, charts and Venn diagrams. So a Venn diagram, I'm sure you've seen before. The nice thing is it takes data and it puts everybody in just one location. 
So if I have, um, it says, let's read this, the data from a survey of 440 students. So we have a total of 440 students. If I just told you how many were in the honor roll, well, you don't know, do they play a sport, do they not? So let's put each of these in one spot. So if they play a sport and are on the honor roll, let's start with that one. That's my middle section. So that middle section is the overlap. So they're the people that are in the honor roll circle and also in the sport circle only play a sport those 45 would go here the fact that this is much bigger doesn't matter that you're not looking at uh, how big that portion of the circle is and then only in the honor roll that would be this part right here use your calculator and add those three sections so that's 115 plus 250 plus 45 gives me 410. we had a total of 440. so if i subtract 440 minus the 410 that gives me 30 students left over. So those are the students that don't play a sport. They're not in an, on the honor roll. So we put that number somewhere outside of the two circles. Usually it goes in the bottom corner here. Now make sure, I know I said this a lot, make sure you're not just watching. Make sure this uh, math is not a, a, a activity where you just watch. Make sure you have your calculator out and you're doing this. You can pause the video anytime. What percent of students are uh, on, I'm sorry, let me start over. What percent of students on the honor roll play sports? Okay, well, let's figure that out. So we first need to figure out how many total students are in the honor roll. So the honor roll students would be this section here, the 115. They're the people that are in the honor roll but don't play a sport, plus the 250. They're the ones that are in the honor roll and play a sport. So if I add those together, 115 plus 250, that gives me 365. So I have 365 students on the honor roll. We want to know what percent of students that are uh, in the honor roll also play a sport. Okay, well, that would be these students here. They're the ones that are in the honor roll and play a sport. So to figure out the percent, we just divide the part of the whole. So, and then we're going to multiply that by 100 because this will give us a decimal. So we're going to multiply that by 100 and that will give us uh, our percent. Percent is how many out of 100. Again, this will give us decimal form. So let's do this one together. So we have 250 out of the 365. So again, we're really just looking at the honor roll circle. 250 out of the 365. If I use my calculator, 250 divided by 365, that gives me about... Six, so this gives me 0.6849. Remember, uh, when we're rounding, let's go to the nearest whole um, whole number percent here. So we don't round and round again. So we just look here. So this would be about 0.68, which we always move our decimal point two places because percent is how many out of 100. So that would be 68 you can always just multiply that by 100, but again, to move, to change a decimal form into percent, we just move the decimal point two places. All right, the next three problems are all going to be using what's called a two-way table. And this is just about reading carefully and putting people in the, in the right category. So let's first make sure we understand what a two-way table means. So like if I say, what does this section indicate okay well that's the people that canoe but don't swim what would like this section be well that would be the total number of people that swim this would be the total number of people that do not canoe so two-way table you have to look as the name implies you have to look at both directions the headings on the top and the headings on the left. So let's put each number in. There are 150 children at summer camp. So that's the total of the total, like all of these together, there's 150. 71 signed up for swimming. Okay, well that's the swimming, that's the total of the swimming. That would be here and here, that would be my 71. There were a total of 62 children that signed up for canoeing. Okay, so that would be the total of the canoeing. That would be the 62. 
28 of them also signed up for swimming. Okay, so now we're still in the canoeing column. So this direction is columns, just like in Greek, uh, Greek uh, architecture, you have columns. Rows would be going this way, uh, horizontal. Vertical would be the columns. So 28 of the canoeing people also signed up for swimming. So that would be swimming and canoeing would be 28. So once I get each number in the correct category, then it's just a matter of subtracting. So let's finish the canoeing. If there's 62 total, I would just subtract 62 minus 28, and that would give me the 34 people. Let me make those a different color. So the blue ones are the ones we got from the chart or from the information, and then the uh, other color we have to subtract to get. Swimming, there's a total of 71, 28 of which went canoeing. So if I subtract 71 minus the 28, that leaves me with 43 that swam but did not do canoeing. Again, that would be this, no canoeing, but they did swim. The total this direction has the total 150. So if I subtract 150 minus 71, that would leave me how many people did not swim. So if 71 people swam and 150 total people were in the camp, I just do 150 minus 71. And that leaves me with 79 people did not swim. Do the same thing this direction. There's 150 total people, 62 of which went canoeing. So 150 minus 62 gives me 88 that uh, did not canoe. And then this one you can either get by subtracting uh, this way or this way. I'll just do 88 minus 43, and that would give me 45. So that's how I complete my two-way table. All right, so go ahead and try, don't do the percent problem, just try to read the problem. Put all the numbers in here. Uh, I'll pause while you do that. Okay, so let's just read this. Uh, the eighth grade class uh, went to a water park out of the 65 students who went to the park. So that means my overall total is 65. 17 swam only in the wave pool. Okay, so here's the wave pool. That would mean they did not do the water slide. So again, if I just look at this, these are the people that did no wave pool and no water slide. These would be the people that did the wave pool and the water slide. These are the people that did no wave pool, but did the water slide, et cetera. So you have to look at each heading for each row and each column. So there were 17 that swam only in the wave pool. So that means they did not do the water slide. So that would go there. There were a total of 46 students who rode down the water slide. Okay, so the total water slide, that's here, the total water slide was 46. 17 of those water slide people also did the wave pool. Okay, so 16 wave pool water slide people should go right here. And that's enough for me to finish. I can add that, let's do these in uh, red. So I can add the 16 and 17, that gives me 33. Along the bottom, I can add 33 plus something equals 65. So I can subtract 65 minus 33 gives me 32. Go in this direction, 65 minus 46 leaves me with 19. Going uh, across, 46 minus 16 leaves me with 30. And 17 plus 2 equals 19. You can check and make sure that the arithmetic works in each direction. The last part of this one says what percent of total students went to both the wave pool, and rode the water slide. Okay, so our bottom number is going to be the total students. So that's going to be, so again, it's part of the whole for that particular, um, who, whoever, whatever group they're uh, referencing, whatever group they're, they're talking about. So the whole group in this particular is all the people, which is 65. How many went to the wave pool and the water slide? So the wave pool, water slide, that would be these people right here. So it's 16 out of 65. Divide that 16 divided by 65 gives me uh, 0.246. We're rounding to the nearest whole percent. So if I move this two places, it gives me 24.6%. So we're going to say this is about 25%. Show that work. 
what percent of students that did not go on the wave pool? Okay, so here, my whole is not all 65. My whole is the people that did not go uh, to the wave pool. Okay, not to the wave pool. That would be no wave pool. So here's no wave pool. There's a total of 32 of them. So my whole group that I'm talking about here is just the 32 people that did not go to the wave pool. It's not always easy to, to figure that out. What percent, what part of those 32 did ride the water slide? Okay, so again, here's the water slide. These are the 30 people that rode the water slide and did not do the wave pool. So it's 30 out of 32. Divide that. Gives me 0 0.9375, which would be, again, always move it two places, 93.75%. We're going to the nearest whole number percent. So that would be 94%. All right, the last one, again, I'll pause and go ahead and try to fill this in yourself. All right, let's put in what we know. 78 students own a cell phone. So here's my cell phone. Here's my total. 57 of those, so that's the cell phone people, also own an MP3 player. So I have 57 MP3 people that also have a cell phone. 13 students that do not own a cell phone, but own an MP3 player. Okay, so that would be these people here. So 13 people that do not own a cell phone. Now, that's not the total here. You got to keep reading the, the sentence. That's really common. If you put the 13 here, that's a really common mistake. Again, let's read the whole phrase. 13 people that do not own a cell phone, but own an MP3 player. So it's not all of these people. It's just the ones that also own an MP3 player. Nine students do not own either. So that would be no cell phone, no MP3 player. So that would be the nine people here. And that's enough to finish. I can add these two. Gives me 70. Add the 13 and the nine going across that row. I can add the 78 and the 22 going down that column. Uh, I can subtract 78 minus 57 to finish this row. And I can add the 21 and the nine. I can subtract here, whatever's easier and I would get 30. All right, your homework is this worksheet. You can get started. Have a great weekend.